It's a familiar and horrible feeling. Headache, nausea, dehydration. But hangovers only last a day, right? Well, no. Not according to new research that shows thousands of Kiwis could be getting permanent brain damage from drinking. And you may be surprised just how little it takes. Our reporter, Sarah Hall, has been known to have the odd glass of wine, so she's been investigating. We like a tipple or two. Some would even say we are a country of drinkers. Whether it be a wine after work or a few beers on a Friday. But is even moderate drinking putting us at risk of developing brain damage? It's not how much you need to drink, it's how little you need to drink to actually potentially get a brain injury. Hey pumpkin, having a nuts with your dear old dad. No thanks dad. The don't drink and drive message has been hammered home over the past few decades. But until this recent ad campaign, there's been little focus on the damage we could be doing to our brains. How many of us know how much is too much? We gathered a group of Auckland friends together to talk about their drinking habits. Big night, party involved, you could probably drink a dozen beers. Hmm. I mean, that's yeah, not, I don't think that's anything. Yeah, a few yeah. top shelves, yeah. yeah. But if we, if we last till Friday, it's like a woohoo! <laughs> it is the best week we've ever had. I am probably the classic binge drinker. I don't drink during the week. Uh, I could probably do, you know, seven or eight drinks on yeah. a Friday night. I'm a little bit the same as Taryn. I, I don't drink every night, but kind of when I do, I might have a bottle or something. I don't drink unless I'm actually with someone socially. Yeah. So I don't drink at home typically. Best example, I've probably had a box of Kroner in my fridge for the last three or four months that I haven't touched. See, I'm your stereotypical Māori conservative. Yeah. There's no such... <laughs> what, an, what, an, what an oxymoron! That was very good, wasn't it? Was so Māori conservative! This group seems pretty typical of the way a lot of New Zealanders drink. But according to new Australian research, they could be at risk of brain damage. A study there has found two million Australians are drinking at hazardous levels. Bad news for Australia, but even worse for New Zealand. Believe it or not, you're worse drinkers than Australians are. Australian neuropsychologist Martin Jackson. In terms of alcohol consumption per capita, Australia's number 35, New Zealand's number 24. So you actually drink more alcohol than Australians do and therefore we would expect alcohol brain injury to be a bigger problem in New Zealand than it is in Australia. Oh, we've got to, ch we've got to change that then. We can't be more brain damaged than the Australians. <laughs> that wouldn't be right. <laughs> the Australians say, though, it's no laughing matter that the drinking habits of New Zealanders are becoming worse. And if it continues, our health system will be swamped with people suffering brain damage in years to come. We've come to Melbourne, where the only alcohol-related brain injury centre in the South Pacific is located. Let's just copy these designs for me. Just on Our the... bias carries out neurological tests on people to see whether they have a brain injury from drinking. New Zealand should be testing too, according to our bias director, Sonia Burton. Your statistics are alarming. I mean, 800,000 people is an extraordinary amount of New Zealanders to be at risk of alcohol-related brain damage. There needs to be an enormous amount of, of attention placed on this. It is a costly disability, it is a preventable disability, that if you act and if you act early, doesn't need to be occurring. Our bias predicts with 800,000 Kiwis drinking at hazardous levels, Conservatively, 10% of us, or 80,000, could already be brain damaged. The exact number, you don't know. You don't know because you don't screen for it, you don't diagnose for it, and you don't intervene early when it's actually possible then to do something really effective and positive with the person. In New Zealand, we couldn't find any psychologist prepared to evaluate milder alcohol-related brain damage 
or test an average drinker such as myself. They're coming out really nicely. We're going to start the next set of pictures now. So in the name of research, I agreed to undergo an MRI test to see whether a moderate drinker was affected by alcohol. I would have to wait nervously for my results. Unlike Australian Alan Stubbs, who already knows he's suffering brain damage from alcohol. Once upon a time, Alan was a journalist. Now he lives a quiet life in a Melbourne suburb. I have problems with organisational skills and short-term memory loss. and I also have problems with um, decision-making. Alan, whose idea of fun these days is a game of backgammon, was a bit more of a rabble-rouser in his youth. Back then he'd drink up to 20 pints a day, and he reckons lots of his mates were the same. Well, I was sort of in the middle of it and, and doing it, you know, there was no, there was no thought at all given to, to what, um, what the consequences would be. So at the time, did you think you were doing any damage? Not at all. Alcohol is a neurotoxin that attacks the central nervous system and the brain. It burns away the white matter, which is the protective sheath stopping our brain impulses from getting mixed up. So what would you actually see on the brain? You'd see damage in two areas. The first area is these two parts here, which is called the cerebellum. This is involved in your balance and motor coordination and these areas start to shrink. You'd also see damage in this part here which is called the frontal lobe. Again you would see shrinkage of the frontal lobes and on a scan you would see excess fluid around the frontal lobes. The effect of alcohol on the brain is not limited to adults. 70% of teenagers are binge drinking and that could have serious consequences to their frontal lobes which do not develop until their mid-twenties. What you'll see is problems with their problem solving, impulse control, uh, planning and organisation, abstract thinking, or, or what we call executive functions. The early symptoms of an alcohol-related brain injury are hard to pick up. Initially there's memory loss, then difficulties concentrating and problem solving. As it progresses, it will eventually develop into what is known as Korsakoff syndrome. You lose your balance and your coordination, and uh, you tend to lose it from your trunk, and it's what's called a truncal ataxia. So you start to feel like you're going to fall over, and so what you do is you put your feet wider apart to stop that happening. So we say that the person with alcohol brain damage walks with a wide base gait because they walk with their feet wide apart. But that sounds to me like you've got to be a pretty hardcore drinker to get a brain injury? Well, you don't have to be. There, I mean, 10% or 12% of Australians drink alcohol at a level which might cause brain injury. It's not hardcore drinking. So did our group have any idea how much you'd have to drink before becoming brain damaged. The type of recreational drinking that we do normally in this sort of environment is not going to impact our brain function. If, if the, you know, your brain capacity is not that great to start with, I don't think you've got much of a chance. But yeah, I think there's, <laughs> what do we drink? Like you're saying, the old person drinks meth or they're sniffing glue, or you're going to wipe them out pretty quickly. Yeah. But I think generally, the average person, a lot to yeah. get rid of your brain cells to make your brain damage. So, how much is too much? Researchers say to be at risk of developing a brain injury, it's three drinks a day for women and six drinks for men. If you um, go home and have a, you know, one or two stubbies of um, beer after work, this might be your normal habit, and then you share a bottle of wine with your partner over dinner, you're actually drinking at levels which could cause a brain injury.